Thank you. It's good to be here. So this is me. I think I'm five or six years old. It's my favorite picture of me. It's going to be important as we get through here. Uh, but I'm at my grandfather's farm, and I'm sitting on my pony, Blue Eyes. As stubborn a pony that ever lived, ever. A lot of times I'd have to get off of her and lead her. We have three goes today. Three goes. Now, it may be unusual to not uh, tell you what the topic is before we talk about the goes, but in this world we have people that their glass is half full and we have people that their glass is half empty. And we need to be prepared for that now because we're going to get to a point that depending on which one of those you are, you're going to get very excited or very depressed. So we'll see. And I, if, I hope to remember to ask, where are you uh, when we get to that point? So our goal is today to freshen your perspective. Perspective on what? You'll have to wait for that. Move you to living intentionally in every area of your life. And finally, to get you excited about living the life that you have. Now, how did I get here and who am I? And when I walk into a room, I'm always thinking about how did you get here and who are you? And I hope that when you look at a speaker, you're asking the same thing. How did you get here and who are you? And I showed you a little bit of example of, of me uh, on a horse. And I love that. I love that because it's, it's what is that old saying? Uh, you got to ride, ride out on the horse that you rode in on. Uh, so, but how I actually got here to this talk was two things happened in the same week. The first thing that happened was I sit in on a five-hour meeting that talked about uh, time management. And then a couple of days later, I met with a potential client, gave him a proposal uh, to help him in his business, and he said to me, all you are really selling is time. And that kind of hit me a little funny, even when he said it. And I left there, and that really got to percolating within me. It wasn't, he, didn't, he didn't say it in any negative way at all. He was just stating as a matter of fact. But it just didn't sit right with me. So today, our topic is time management, a fresh perspective. So what is time management? I'll have to read this because I went to the great uh, book online, Wikipedia. And it defines it as the act or process of planning and exercising conscious control over the amount of time spent on specific activities, especially to increase effectiveness, efficiency, or productivity. We have all heard about time management. In fact, there's thousands and thousands of books written on time management. Can you imagine how much time it would take to read all those books? There are thousands of books written on time management. For a very long time, people have tried to figure out how to manage this thing we call time. There's thousands of books written on time management, but you notice there's only one life. Each of us only has one life. So this is Royce simplifying everything. Time management is just managing time. We can make it as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. What is time? Time is one of the greatest misconceptions of modern life. Surrounded by clocks, cell phones, date planners, <coughs> TV schedules, and computers, we imagine that time marches forward in a steady, linear progression. A friend of mine, Bruce Zoller. I don't know if anybody in here knows Bruce. But those are good words, really good words. But Bruce is just an average guy like you and I. He's, he's no one famous. He's not the smartest guy on the block, although he's pretty smart. But he's just a regular guy, and, and I know that won't convince you. That word, misconception, I, I mean, Bruce is just Bruce. You may not believe him. 
But that's what we have. We have, we have uh, our cell phones, we have day planners, we have clocks, we have big clocks, clock, 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 clock. We have TV schedules, we have computers, we are all over the place. But remember, Bruce says this is a misconception. Time is a misconception. Now, whether you believe Bruce or not, in reality, here's some of the things that we do. We spend time, we gain time, we lose time, we run out of time, we measure time, we accommodate it, we do hard time, easy time, fast time, slow time, time foolishly, time wisely. We either have the time or we don't have the time. And then we have this thing down here at the bottom that's the most amazing thing of all. We have daylight saving time. Daylight saving times, what that really means is we control the sun. We've decided that we can stop the sun in time and we can save some of that because we want more time. So how do you use time? Or how does time use you? Think about it. Do you have a day planner? Who has a cell phone? Who has a calendar on her cell phone? I have my cell phone and it, uh, it not only has my schedule on it for the day, it has an alert for every one of those things to remind me of that. Who has a clock at home? Who has an alarm clock? Does anybody still get up with an alarm clock? I do also. So many of the people that I work with, they, they use their cell phones. That's an interesting thing about cell phones. I was reading as I was researching for this, uh, when it comes down to um, how much time we spend on technology, the average is about uh, 8.2 hours a day. It is true. Computer time, phone time, <coughs> Facebook time, calendar time, at work and, and at home. We, we, spend, we spend more time on technology than we do sleeping. So bring me back to the cell phone. Some of my clients, they have a problem with sleeping. Sleep deprivation is one of the worst things in our society. It leads to all kinds of, of ills. Weight gain, physical pain. If you have a cell phone, well statistics says if you use a cell phone for your alarm clock, that means it's, beside, it's in your bedroom or by your bed on at least half the people wake up when they hear something on that phone. They get an alert, whether it's a, uh, an email or a text. Mine, mine does a little bitty thing when, when an email comes through. But half of those people then will pick up their phone in the middle of the night and look at their phone. So, so, so they're taking time. It, they're taking time, they're managing time, they're spending time, they're adding to that 8.2 hours of technology on, on their cell phones in the middle of the night when we're supposed to be sleeping. I can't do that, I have an alarm clock. I have to get up in the middle of the night anyway, but you generally go to the bathroom. But I don't examine that and I don't look at the latest news and I don't look at Facebook, I don't look at anything. In fact, I try to do it without opening my eyes and I absolutely don't want to look at that clock because I don't want to know how much time I have left to sleep. We are obsessed with time. But remember what uh, Bruce says. It's a <coughs> misconception. Now, you may not believe Bruce because he's just an average guy, but what about this guy? He's a genius. This thing that we call time, it's not real. It's not tangible. You can't put your hands on it. You can't put your arms around it. I'm, and we make the mistake that, we're, that, we, that we say we want to manage time. We want to manage something that is not real. But selling time reminds me of this story in my life. My dad's business sat on the corner of Campbell and Marshall Street, downtown Louisville, just a block off of Walnut, which is now Muhammad Ali. And my dad owned about 100 pieces of single-family rental property. 
I, he had a catering business, so he was standing on the corner in front of his business, and I was standing there with him, and I was probably 10, 11, 12 years old. And a man came up and he said, Mr. Roy, he said, how much do you want for that wrought iron fence over there? My dad said, well, which, which one? He said, that, that house right over there. And, and uh, dad said, I, I, don't, I don't remember. He said, I'll take $100 for it, but you got to cut it down and take it out and you got to get it out of here in two hours. And the guy said, okay. So he gave my dad some money. He walked across the street and I said to my dad, Dad, we don't own that house. And my dad said, I know. He sold something that didn't belong to him. And the guy cut the fence down and took it. But that's what we're, that, when I heard I'm selling time, I'm selling something that I don't even have. I don't even have. I spent a month thinking about, am I selling time? but I'm not selling time, and I'm not getting any younger either. Then I have this thought. It is interesting, we talk about time and we work at managing time, but this, this, is, this is like a game changer. We don't even know how much time we have. We figure 24 hour day, we're gonna be here, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, and we have no clue, none, zero, if that next 24 hours that we even have to sell or manage, give, waste, fixed, make up, is it going to be easy? Is it going to be hard? We just have no clue. It's part of the human condition, I guess, to try to, try to put our hands around something that we can't put our hands around. So the average life expectancy is 79 years are 692,040 hours. When I was breaking this down, I broke it down all the way down to uh, seconds. That's a big number. Problem with seconds is it's a big number, but it clicks off really, 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 really fast. Really fast. If one drop of water equal one hour of life, we would have approximately 10 gallons that would be it. 10 gallons of life. Now I know that is true if you work off the average because I sat down and I took an eyedropper, this eyedropper right here, and figured out how many drops that it took to fill two ounces. It's more tedious than you would think. My arms were cramping, my finger, I mean, just one drop after the other. But then I multiplied that out, and I get that. One drop of water equals one hour of life. So, so what I'm saying is that there's 692,040 drops of water in 10 gallons. Now, you could count them all to make sure that I'm right, and I'm I'm, uh, I'm maybe off a few drops, but I tried to be as, nobody was home and it was quiet. And, and uh, I did the best that I could do. I, th I think I'm pretty close. So a fresh look, I love that picture. There's just something about water that has to do with life. Most of the planet's made up of water. Most of us is made up of water. And there's nothing like a good drink of water. You don't even have to be thirsty to know that a good drink of water is good. Let me go back. When I pulled this up, okay, I want you all to raise your hands. Who's the half empty people and who's the half full people? When I was telling this concept to my wife, she said, she said, you're the Debbie Downer. And I said, oh, you're a half empty person, aren't you? <coughs> she said, what do you mean? I said, well, that's your first thought. That's all we have, 10 gallons. That's not a lot. 
you'll never be able to pick up a gallon of water at the grocery store, spring water, and, and look at 10 of them right there and say, that, that's it. That is it. So where were you? Half empty or half full? Did you get excited? What? Half full. Good. Good. That's where I want you to be. I want us all to be there. It's not time management. It's life management. Never, ever, ever say time management again. Time is not real. Your life is very, very real. It's real to you, and odds are, it's real to someone else. Life is real. I don't even, I don't even like really using the word management, but we like that. We're orderly people. And maybe with your 10 gallons, you can manage that. And I would recommend sometimes that you stir it up and you shake it up also. And life is not just clear water. Life is made up a lot of things. There's a lot of things in our water. Everybody's just different. But it's not time management. It is life management. Remember that forever. There's me. So I'm not selling time. You can't see that up there. I'm not selling time. I'm selling my life. I'm selling my life. I figured it has cost me 15 drops out of my 10 gallons to prepare for this meeting, to put all of this together. On another two drops this morning, to get here and to be here with you all. And each of you all is costing you about two drops. The time you drove here, the time you spend time here. Now, when we talk about time, every day is a new day. When we talk about life, every day is just really a new opportunity. You're not, you're not, when we think about time, we think we're going to add to it. We're getting more of it. Our 10 gallons, those 15 drops that I have invested in being here with you all today, I never get that back. Now, there's a lot of drops. Believe me, when I started counting drops of water, I never thought I would get to two ounces. But I did. So we're dropping our life one drop at a time everywhere we go. And that container is slowly, slowly sinking. Slowly sinking. That's me. When I look at that picture, my wife likes that picture. You know why she likes it? Because I'm smiling. She never says I smile enough. I'm one of those guys, I practice smiling. I practice smiling to make her happy. Now, what you can't see in that picture, that's not a practice smile. But she cropped that picture for me, but sitting next to me is my granddaughter. And we're having a snow cone together. That was a good day. Those were drops. Those were drops well spent. But when I look, I just see a guy getting older. That's all I see. Where's that guy that was on that pony? Still in there somewhere. So put yourself here. Who are you giving your drops to? Who are you selling your drops to? It's not time management. It's life management. So I rounded it up there, right? 704,000 drops of life in 10 gallons. Sometimes we pour out a half a glass. Sometimes we just give a few drops. Don't ever say time management ever again. Life management. 
A single drop of water equals one drop of life. How precious is it now? Think about a glass of water. We have to have water. I'm a runner and I have suffered dehydration. I've been in the hospital for dehydration. It's very painful. We can go a long time without food, but we can't go very long without water. We know water is valuable. We know it's important. But if you think of it in terms of life, how precious is it now? How sweet is it? There we are. It's finite. I said, those 10 gallons, that's it. We're not getting any more. But what we have is good. It's really good. It's good to us and it's good to other people. It's valuable. In the Olympics, or this year's Olympics, I'm watching the 10 meter diving. One of the divers, he's being interviewed and he says this incredible thing. We have 30 feet and two seconds to do everything that we do. It's finite. We'll have so many feet on so many seconds to live our life. <coughs> we can just walk in and walk out or we can do a whole lot more. If they can do all of that in 30 feet in two seconds, what can we do? They are more productive two seconds of their life than I've probably been in 20 years of my life. It's crazy. But what's available to them is available to all of us. Each one of those drops is precious. And in those two seconds, I was thinking that. I was thinking that when the diver jumped into the water and he says two seconds, I'm thinking, and those are two seconds you're not going to give back. And I think he would say, yeah, but look what I did. Now, he's micro drops. I'm saying a drop equals an hour. He just, he just gave a drop of a drop. I don't even know how you measure that. But he maximized those two seconds. And some of them won. And most of them lost. However many people compete in that, we have one gold, one silver, one bronze, everybody else goes home. But they go home with their life. And they live a life. And they're not just spending time in the water. They are spending time as water. So where are you dropping your precious life? I love that picture. Mother bird feeding the baby birds. There's your question. Where are you dropping your precious life? She is literally giving her life. What gives her life, she is spreading that out among her children. So is your table full or is it waiting to be filled? When I took these pictures, I had no idea where and when I would be using them. This is this summer in the backyard of our house. We brought three tables out of our house and chairs from everywhere. And this is an engagement party for our daughter. And at this table is my wife is at the far end. I'm, this is my plate. You can't see me because I'm taking the picture. And uh, there's a lot of family at that table. A lot of family. So is your table full? Or is it waiting to be filled? And how big is your table? I don't know. It could be twice as big as that. It could be, could be half that. Okay, we get it. What now? Carpe diem, right? That's it. Seize the day. Grab hold of it. Nah, not really. No, because here's the problem. Does anybody know what the definition of carpe diem is? Used to urge someone to make the most of the present time and give little thought to the future. Boy, it's a good concept. But if you read definition, that's the simplest one of all, but it really just says, make the most of everything regardless of anything else. 
Is that really what we do? Do we want to tell our loved ones, do we want to tell the people that we work with, the ones that we work for, our employees, whatever it is, wherever you find yourself, I'm going to seize the day. That would mean there's no payroll this week, maybe. That means maybe I'm not coming home. That means I got things and things that I got to do, and it doesn't have anything to do with anybody but me. Seize the day, boy, it really sounds good. It may mean just kicking those 10 gallons of water over and just letting them run out. Yeah, it sounds good. But for this meeting, for this time, for this talk, it's not worth hardly anything. In fact, it's counter to what I'm trying to tell you all. Life is precious. Every single drop, every hour that you spend during your day, you're dropping water somewhere, and it's not coming back. Life is precious. It's about living intentional, living responsible, preparing for the future, taking care of yourself, taking care of others, loving where you need to, and working where you need to. We take care of ourselves by sleeping. We take care of ourselves by eating well, by exercising. But reading, the, reading good things, watching good things. Life is meant to be lived. It's not meant to be thrown away. <coughs> and it's not meaning like we only got 10 gallons, so we need to run full speed. No, we were designed for eight hours of sleep. In order to maximize those other 16 hours during the day, we need eight hours of sleep. It's how we were made. We can't run full speed the whole time because we burn out. I know what that's like. I used to work seven days a week. It really amounted to nothing before it was over with. My children didn't see me. My wife didn't see me. I didn't see me. It's not about carpe diem. It's about living intentional, living responsible preparing for the future, taking care of yourself, taking care of others, loving where you need to, and working where you need to. It's precious, every single drop. So what do we do? It's very simple. We can all do this. Track your activities for a week. Where are you going, what are you doing, and who are you doing it with? What are you doing with your water? And who are you dropping it with? I promise you, if you will do a weekly tracking of all your time, from the time you get up until the time you go to bed, and you start looking into that, you will see where you're, where you're investing those drops of water, where you're bringing life to you and the people around you, but where you're not doing that. And you may look at it and say, that's okay. Those few drops were just sitting down, hanging out, just doing nothing. That's okay. That's part of life. But the point is to look at that. Whatever it is, whatever your week looks like, is it precious? Does it taste good? Are you using it to its best? Nothing grows without water. We're growing people around us. And we're being grown by people around us, dropping water. Always keep in mind these words. It's not time you're tracking. It's life you're tracking. That's what you're tracking. Not your time. You're tracking your life. Your life. Not my life. You're not tracking someone else's life. You're tracking your life. Before we get to that last slide, I want to conclude with this. That guy we saw at the beginning on that horse, that pony, I love that guy. That guy, if, I, if he meets the average, if he meets the average, and he's not planning on that, by the way, he's figuring on breaking that average, but if he just meets the average, I figure I have about three and a half to four gallons left. I 
that sounds like a lot to me. But that's the reality of my life. If I meet the average, I've got three and a half to four gallons left. And that's the other thing. I can't, I can't add to that average. I can, I can work really hard to maintain and take care of what it is, this life that I have. But I don't ultimately have any control over if, do I have 10 gallons, do I have 8 gallons, do I have 14 gallons? I'm just trying to be practical. I think I got about three and a half gallons, maybe four gallons left. And I want every single drop to taste like the only drop on the best drop. So it's life management. That's what it's all about. I will leave you with that last sentence. Make every single drop 